And I just realized as we talk about the state of people not affording food or Christmas presents back in the 80s, me, a middle-aged white dude, talking about closing his <laughs> pool and having to deal with dead leaves and uh, opening back up in May. I don't know what to tell you, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> Lights. Camera. And f- action. Welcome to the I Remember Liking That Movie Podcast. Remember those childhood movies you loved? We're going to watch them again and find out if they're still as amazing as you remember. Let's get ready to join Anna and Jimmy as they go back and watch those movies you remember being oh so awesomely good. Horror movies that scared. Comedy movies that dared. And action movies so preposterously ludicrous that they defied the laws of common sense. Now, here's your hosts, Anna Santos and Jimmy Coates. Now, this is... The movie we're doing today is One Magic Christmas, and this might have been a epic fucking mistake. <laughs> and you'll see why as I put it together. Well, let's get into it. Have you ever seen this movie? I don't think I have. Right. Okay. Because this we I we picked because I, I just wanted to see it. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know if I want to. What I remember about this movie was it is a lot. It's a different take on It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. And I saw and it. I remember it being a little sad, mm. but very, very, very uplifting. But I okay. have not seen this movie since the 80s. I don't think I've ever seen this movie. And it has Harry Dean Stanton. Yes. I love. And Mary Stein. Yes. Stein Virgin. Stein Virgin, who is Virgin. awesome. So yeah. it has it has a good cast. Or Steenbergen, Virgin. Sarah Sarah Pauly got her start on this movie. It's she's okay, not one of the main ones. And then there's a little girl on the who is the main girl who went on to do little trivia here. Mary plays her mother in this movie. Mm-hmm. Let me bring up her name. This is stupid. One magic Christmas. Mary Steenbergen. Yes. And the little girl is Elizabeth Harness, Harnois, Noy, Harnoy. Harnois. Well, Mary plays her mother in this movie. Yes. Elizabeth goes on to star in about, I don't know, three seasons, if maybe a little more, um, with Ted Danson in CSI. Oh. Yeah. And so she's That's been quite why busy. she looks familiar. Yeah. And she plays the little girl in this one. Oh. Oh, well, this will be now. Fun. That's you think so. That's what I remember <laughs> about this movie. So we'll get into it and you'll see what yes. I'm talking about. Let's go to Tale of the Tape. One Magic Christmas, 1985, a kids and family holiday rated mm-hmm. G and comes in at one hour and 28 minutes. Okay. There's the DVD cover. Looks lovely. It does. Very soft. Very magical. Look there, Santa. Peg lines. Miracles do happen. Eh. A magical film like this only happens once in a lifetime. Now everyone will believe in Santa Claus. That is not a tagline. No. <laughs> Jesus. That's it. <laughs> Synopsis. Now I, I am going to put this up. Oh, that's much better when you full screen it. Ginny, Mary Steen Virgin, Bergen. Sorry, Mary has a difficult time mustering Christmas spirit due to her husband, Jack's Gary Basarba, Basarba? Uh unemployment and her humble position as a grocery store clerk. With the holiday fast approaching, Ginny and Jack's daughter, Abby Elizabeth Harnois, goes to deliver her letter to Santa. On her way, Abby meets Gideon, an angel intent on saving Christmas from Ginny's poor attitude. With Gideon's magical assistant, Ginny learns how things could be much worse. Okay, this sounds a little bit familiar. Well, it's 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 a wonderful life. Yeah, no, no, but hey, you might have seen it. Like you might have I might have seen it and just like repressed the memory. That you doesn't work well for us. You might have. <laughs> okay, so here is the poster. 
again, it looks, it, it's not a great poster. It's no. not like they're ripped off Trapped in Paradise, although it came out quite a few years before. Uh, for those listening, it's Disney's Up Top. It is a snow globe with Gideon. He has a halo, the little girl and the mom in the snow globe, and one magic Christmas. It's okay posters, but yeah. it looks Christmassy. A hundred percent. All right. Let's go to the box office. It was released November 22nd, 1985. Great. With a budget of $7.5 million. It opened in 824 theaters and finished the weekend at number two. The weekend total at $2.6 million. The film was in theaters for 47 days and bowed out with $13.6 million. So it might have broke even. Like it might have made a little money depending yeah. on how much they put out for back then. 7.5. It might have made a little bit of money, but it wasn't anything huge. No. Those numbers. No. Now, this is where, let's go to Rotten Tomatoes. This is where it all fell apart for me. (laughs) (laughs) 17 critic reviews have it at 47%. 2,500 plus audience have it at 68%. So the audience likes a bit more than the the critics. So we'll start with Fresh, and you may start. Thank you. It's a godsend for parents. A movie you can take the kids to, but which won't leave you gnashing at the armrest halfway through. Paul Atanasio, Washington Post. This is a treasure trove of sick laughs, and it's from Disney. Rob Gonzalez, Rob's Movie Vault, original score, C. Phil Borso's take on Christmas is a somewhat odd movie, but it does have a a slow charm, not unlike It's a Wonderful Life by way of Windlanders. Dorothy Woodend, the tie. Fantasy Holly Fair has some good moments with Harry Dean Stanton. It's like they're saying that's the only good part. Pretty Steve Crumb, Dispatch Tribune, original score, three out of five. Damn. Okay, so those weren't glowing. <laughs> no, no, they were not. So you may start with the rotten. The most depressing Christmas movie of all time. Jeffrey M. Anderson, Combustible Celluloid, original score, one out of four. 80s Christmas movie has depressing, intense scenes. Brian Costello, Common Sense Media, original score, two out of five. Damn. Screenwriter Thomas Meehan seems to have had It's a Wonderful Life in mind. The results were closer to A Nightmare on Elm Street. Dave Kerr, Chicago Reader. Oh, geez. (laughs) This is very unfortunate. What we have here is a movie with intelligent screenplay, wonderful performances, and skillful direction. But it is a tactical miscalculation from beginning to end. Roger Ebert, Chicago Sun-Times, original score, two out of four. And you can actually watch the full review on YouTube. And what he is, kind of what they're saying is, it's not a very joyful Christmas movie. It's very depressing. Mm. Which is awesome. (laughs) It's just what you need around the holidays. Yeah, to get all depressed. Perfect. IMDb. 4.2 4.2 thousand user ratings has it about 6.4 out of 10 close to the audience of Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah, you may start beautiful and tearful. Clock me hands hey. down. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, hands down. Best Christmas movie of all time. Movie buff 25. You will either hate it or like it. I loved it. Partial movie viewer. Well, last one don't make no sense. Excellent balance of darkness and redemption. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Stephen Franklin. The best Christmas movie ever made. Mark D73. The best Christmas movie for Grinches. Legend 99. What are we about to watch? Yeah. One of the best and most underrated Christmas movies ever. Nine out of ten film mocker. Yeah. A very dark and different sort of Christmas film, but certainly a favorite of many. Eight out of ten. Robert Duder. Hmm. A truly great Christmas movie. 7 out of 10. Gavin, 6942. One Magic Christmas is depressing and disturbing. Not a good movie for young children. 6 out of 10. Iron Horse 4. <laughs> Thank you, Iron Horse, for letting us know. Not a Christmas film for young children. 5 out of 10. Moral Man 2. A Picture Postcard Town does not deliver a Picture, post- picture Postcard Christmas. 4 out of 10. Mark Waltz. Do not watch this if you are depressed. It'll only make it worse. (laughs) Three out of ten, Plankton rules. Thank you, Plankton. One tragic Christmas, two out of ten, sarcasm for free. Go ahead. The whole page? Yeah. Are you all kidding me? (laughs) But boys wake 
Pool 4. Good grief, not for children's viewing. S. Morton 2. How did this earn a G rating? Philly 88. So bad I was traumatized. <laughs> Bloomkind 59. Disney in the 80s was an odd place. Matthew Silverhammer. We hated this movie. Carson 9806. <laughs> God, those are amazing. Oh, sweet. Oh, God. <laughs> so uh, I probably won't watch this with my children. Uh, good call. Yeah. Good All call. All right. So there was only one trailer I could find. And this yeah. this doesn't even help. But we'll watch it. Um, This helps nothing. I I caught a couple minutes and uh, near the uh, seconds near the end. And you'll see. Here we go. This holiday season, Walt Disney Pictures gives you the gift of one magic Christmas. Santa Claus? How come you don't look like the Santa Claus in the mall? <laughs> because the Santa Claus in the mall isn't me. Santa Claus, how can one sleigh carry all the toys for all the kids every place? Ooh, it's a magic sleigh, Abby. Very magic. Christmas, it will make you believe. Why I don't know. <laughs> feel like, that felt like the trailer for a slasher movie. I kept expecting the killer to like knock over the the snow globe. <laughs> this this was not. That was creepy. <laughs> Yeah, and it doesn't help. It doesn't really show anything. So yeah. I'm not walking in blind. I do remember bits of it, but I'm having real Steel Dawn vibes. <laughs> I'm <laughs> super concerned. <laughs> like, I am super, super concerned. People are talking about don't watch it if you're depressed. It's traumatizing. It's don't watch it with kids. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't. Maybe yeah, I don't remember no. this movie at all. I picked it thinking it was. The super awesome, uplifting Christmas movie. I think I might be wrong. I think you might be. Yeah. I think you might be. So what's your prediction? <laughs> I think I'm going to be disturbed by it. <laughs> it could be like the other ones. It could be that we watch it and go, oh my God, that was amazing. It it's very like possible. It, but, but it is it's, possible. It's very possible. I, possible. I'm hoping I'm right. I'm hoping that it was, it was because a lot of those reviews are from when the movie came out i'm hoping that it was misunderstood <laughs> back then and it's mm -hmm. this beautiful piece of art now after saying that i don't think so <laughs> i think i could be wrong i was wrong and this is not going to be a great christmas movie but we're hoping but we we're are hoping. hoping yeah i hope i was hoping steel oh. dawn was gonna be awesome yeah yeah we all well, actually, no, I knew Steel Dawn probably wasn't. Well, I mean. Well, after Steel we Dawn went through everything, kind of it was. Awesome. Yeah, once like, yeah, once we did the preview, it was kind of written on the wall that it was not yeah. going to be a good movie. Yeah. And it delivered <laughs> so oh, boy, badly. <laughs> okay, so okay. we are going to go and watch One Magic Christmas, uh, probably get really depressed mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. come back and give our depressing review. <laughs> Uh, Christmas. You heard them. Movie time. Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat and then watch a classic kick-ass movie from whenever the one we're about to watch was made. All right. So welcome back to the I Remember Like That Movie Pad. Had to fuck off podcast <laughs> did you watch one magic christmas why yes yes i did your initial thoughts what is this pile of shit we just watched why why even make it why it was terrible terrible <laughs> what did you think see i feel this movie was a little confused 
And I think it confused the audience. It also gets a bad rap for being one of the most depressing Christmas movies. Now, don't get me wrong. For the first, what, 50 minutes? 50? This thing is a downer. <laughs> like, holy 50. shit. The Try first... one hour and 15 minutes. Was it? Yeah. It was like, literally in the last 15 minutes where you're like, this is kind of. Uplifting? Not, like, not even fully uplifting, but just stabilizing. Like, the last 15 minutes stabilize you. Like, the first two minutes of going through the town? Yeah. I was already depressed. It was bleak. Poor it looking. Was. Well, also, the very first scene that we ever see is fucking Gideon in a tree playing the harmonica. Yeah. And you're just like, what? And my first question is, why is he in a tree? Second, why is he playing the harmonica? None of this makes sense to me. And then he's having a conversation with Nick. And I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, St. Nick. Okay, makes sense. Now we're going to get into the Christmas movie. The Christmas movie didn't show up until Not like an hour in. And I was like, the fuck? This was just a, a, a white trash version of It's a Wonderful Life. Not even. Like a, a much Not bleaker version. <laughs> Like, the only thing that kind of parallels It's a Wonderful Life is, one, there's an angel. Mm -hmm. And two, there's a little bit of, like, turning back time to when shit really hit the fan. But I'm like, yeah. buddy, shit was hitting the fan before that. It's just when it hit, like, a hard left, they were like, okay, that's when we're going to go back. But that's it. Yeah, but because... It's... don't feel good. No, because... It... Instead of never been born like George Bailey, and he sees what life would be like without him, Gingy, Ginny, Ginny, sorry, gets to see what life would be without her family as her husband gets shot and her children drown. <laughs> it's not like her life was great before that with her family. Right? Uh, take that, like, Ginny. Shitty life, shitty life, shitty life, extra yeah. shitty life. You got Mildly the Christmas spirit now? You and then she. <laughs> I, I was like, even... what the fuck is going on half the time? <laughs> Look, her father died a year ago at around Christmas. If they yeah. had told us that in the very beginning, then maybe I would have been like, okay. But they tell us, they bury that. They bury it super far into the movie. And I'm like, oh, so that's why she hates Christmas. Because we don't know. We just know that she's like, mm, yeah, whatever. And then her husband made me angry through the entire thing. Mr. I've been unemployed for six months apparently can't even deliver pizzas to help out with the household, but you're living in a company house from the company that you haven't worked at in six months, but they're going to evict you on Jan for January 1st. Oh, okay. And then he starts talking about opening up a bike shop and his wife, his poor wife who has to work a double on Christmas Eve is all like, yo bitch, get a job. And he's all like, but bike shop, we can spend some of our savings. And she's like, I haven't, Aren't you gonna help me, Pat? And he's like, I gotta work on bikes for the neighborhood kids. This man infuriated me. He infuriated me. Mr. We can believe in Christmas. Christmas time is magical. Nah, 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 nah. And I'm like, nah, man. If I was the wife, if I was Jenny, I, I would have been like, fuck you. Fuck you all. I'm leaving. See, this this movie touched you. <laughs> oh, it 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 touched my angry spot. That's what it touched. I in but through I'm gonna say I made a note. And uh, uh, there's so many things that I have. <laughs> but anyways, one of the kids quotes the Honeymooners. He's like, one of these days, one of these oh, days, right, yeah. right, pal, right to the moon. And I was like, the fuck? Um, uh, Sears back on that. 20 minutes in, and I feel like I've been watching this movie for an hour. Because <laughs> that's some, what it felt like. Got some weight to it. It was just, I was like, when are we going to get to the actual story? Because so far we've established Ginny is miserable. She's miserable. And poor. And poor. Her husband is poor, a, a but not miserable. And he doesn't know he's poor. But he's totally cool raising money to light up the tree that the town won't pay for the electricity. But God forbid he gets a job, even just like plowing snow to help ends me. No, no, no. We're going to leave it to my wife to work, even though I haven't worked for the last six months. I'm going to fix bikes for the neighborhood kids, but I'm not going to get a job. He angered me. But anyways, these kids are feral, just running out of the house at all hours of the day. Well, that was 80s. Like you could leave and go out the house and come back. Mm. And it was very I remember doing that as a kid. 
Uh, I didn't live yeah. in a big city. I lived out in small towns. Okay, well, let's go let's through the movie. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Santa Claus assigns the Christmas angel Gideon, Harry Dean Stanton, to restore the Christmas spirit in Ginny Granger, Mary Steenburgen, the mother of Cal, Robbie Magwood, and Abby, Elizabeth Harnoy, Harness, Harnoy, and her husband, Jack Gary Bazaraba, who has been out of work for six months, and they must vacate their company-owned house by the new year. Jack fixes bikes as a hobby and dreams of opening his own bike shop, which would use up all the family savings. Ginny works at a grocery store as a cashier. I, at the beginning, I thought that was God talking to Gideon. <laughs> well, he calls him Nick. So I was like, oh, St. Nick. Okay, that's Santa Claus. Oh, did he? Okay, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. He, calls him, he calls him Nick. So yeah, I was, like, oh, I was that... like, why would God give a shit if Ginny has no Christmas spirit? <laughs> well, that was the other thing. And I... And like a fool, I was like, oh, so Gideon has to, like, help Ginny find the Christmas spirit. Cool. Mm-hmm. I thought he was actually going to have conversations with Ginny. Oh, no. Gideon's hardcore. No, he's super creeper. He's a creeper angel because he just talks to the children's. Yeah, let's get to that. <laughs> and like I said, from the moment this movie opened and, like, the going through the town and the shots of the town, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's like not what i remember uh so wikipedia jumps right to christmas the christmas letter and abby's letter so i made a couple notes they're walking through the mall abby won't shut up about going to see santa been mm-hmm. there Ginny is like shut your pie hole abby or i'm gonna shut it for you or something like that something to that effect <laughs> i know every helicopter parent would be is like oh my god did she just openly admit to abusing that child <laughs> but it was the 80s my mom smacked me around for a lot less yeah, no, I hardly ever got smacked around, but that's because I was a smart kid. Did you get threatened? I'm here's the thing. Or did you a, just know? <laughs> yeah, but I had an older brother who had oh. a really hard time listening. Yeah. So I saw him get beat. Yeah. And I was like, nah. And the few times that I actually got spanked by my mom, she was methodical about it. And I always knew what I was getting spanked for. Like she didn't do it out of anger. Hmm. My mother would occasionally yell at me, but I knew if she got a really frustrated tone in her voice that I had already pushed too far. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to reel it back because she's about to lose her shit on me. Mind you, one time she did trying to ground me like those other parents. And I was like, OK. So I went to my room and read. And then when I finally came downstairs to like get something to eat, she was like, you know, are you sorry for what you did? And I was like, what? Oh, right. I'm grounded. No, I'm not sorry. I just went back to my room to keep reading. And she realized that that wasn't a punishment. But um, yeah, no. <laughs> I read everything at that point. It was bad. Um, But yeah, no, it, there was a lot of beatings that happened to other people. And I saw how hard my mom hit. So I did not do stupid shit. Yeah. And I, again, in the caught. 80s. Totally. Normal. Uh, parent, yeah, totally normal. And guess what? Parents of the future, as in the 2020s. Whatever parenting skills you adopted, like listening to their feelings and what they're saying, validation, everyone is a winner, doesn't work. Um, Two decades of your kids just getting more entitled and dependent on others all while getting stupider. This is from a man who's not that bright. So, yeah, start <laughs> slapping your kids, people. <laughs> you you also just use the word stupider, which is not actually a word. <laughs> yeah, I, just, uh, I just admitted I'm not that bright. Um. <laughs> But the husband is like, let's let her see Santa. And she's like, no, yeah. bah humbug. And they're having coffee and donuts. Breakfast. Yeah. yeah. And she yeah. works as the cashier. We see the guy who becomes integral to the plot later as he's standing in line needing change from his kid just to buy the groceries. Yes. After after complaining. Yeah. Because literally he was like, oh, you rang the Doritos through twice. And she's like, oh, oh, yeah, oh I did. I'm sorry. Losing his shit. And yeah, she like, apologized. Yeah. And she's she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I did. I'll take that off right now. Like, no worries. No problem. And he was all like, see what she was trying to do. And I was like, you need to calm down, sir. Yeah. You poor people are down. the worst. Um, and He was played by Wayne Robson. You've never yeah. heard that name, but you definitely have seen his face. A hundred percent. He's dead now. We'll just throw that <laughs> dispiriting log onto the gloomy Honestly, fire, which is this movie. Honestly, if you threw that on for everybody who was in this, <laughs> oh, it would, you'd be saying it a lot. Yeah, a lot of them are dead. The next lady, the mom of the Sarah Pauly mm-hmm. kid, 
who just wants a bike for Christmas. She needs to use food stamps and has to pull put back like little Debbie cakes to get it under twenty five bucks. Yeah, uh, much to the dismay of her kid. <laughs> it's very upsetting when the little Debbies have to go back. Yeah, like why don't you put back the apples? Fuck the apples! Give us the cakes. Yeah. And then they have another, she has a morning off. The husband, Jack, wants to work on bikes in the basement with his buddy, Eddie. She's like, it's my only day off. We need to pack. And because Jack is fixing Wait, bikes. It's not her only day off. It's her only morning, morning off. off. Yes. She doesn't have the whole day off. She has the morning off. Yeah. This is what people did back in the day, people. They got mornings off, did shit around the house, and then went to work. Yeah, I never got into that. <laughs> No. <laughs> I was like, if I have to work, that's my task for the day. I'm yeah. not doing anything on top of that. If I had the morning off, I'm waking up very slowly, having yeah. a coffee, and then complaining about going but to work at 11. Apparently, Ginny is the only one who's thinking that they have to move out in 10 days and pack up an entire house. Yeah. Because Jack is all like, uh, I'm going to go fix some bikes for the neighborhood kids. Yeah. Because... Um... Jack is, Jack is fixing the bikes that he got donated or found or he stole them. I don't know. He's doing it for kids who aren't getting anything or not getting mm-hmm. a lot for Christmas. We know Sarah Polly's character is like, I just want a bike for Christmas. But mommy said we're poor and Santa don't like poor folk. Uh, but <laughs> Abby and her brother, Cal, they know she is getting a bike and they have that little. <laughs> <laughs> That's when Stranger Danger Gideon shows up, just an old man in a trench coat watching kids play on the street. Yeah, uh, the kids and are starting conversations it. with them. Yeah, then the puck goes right for Abby, and Gideon uses his angel magic, and the shit goes right into a neighbor's window. And every time he uses his angel magic, there's like a big flash and a whiteout of the screen. Yeah, very eighties. So eighties. I'm eighties. like, <laughs> so guys, shitty. really? Yeah, if you were the owner of that house, you'd be pissed. I'd be like, Gideon, I couldn't fucking use your right? angel magic to the empty lot across the street. Then but Ginny's... also, wait, yeah. I have to point this out because after that, everybody just disperses and it shows yeah. a scene of the empty street. Yeah. And there's still two garbage cans in the street. The first rule of street hockey is you clear the street when you're done playing. When you're done, exactly. but you break a window, there's a parent coming out. You you scatter. Each kid picks up a can. Each kid picks up a can. You never leave it in the street because that's even more evidence because they will find out whose cans those are and go to those houses yeah you can't be leaving in mind amateurs um jenny is having her shower like she can't even cut loose in the shower she's like embarrassed to sing and like sing girl lather yourself up touch yourself jimmy don't care she, uh, so uh, I the saw phone that rings scene as like her trying to be happy and just not having it in her <laughs> i know it was even her having a shower a moment's of peace was fucking depressing. <laughs> it was. The phone rings. She gets out. Face cloth falls and plugs the drain. Cal and Abby are racing into the house and fighting. I. This was very familiar with friends, brother, fighting to see who gets to use the bathroom first. Like, mm. been there. Abby gets there first. Cal's jumping around doing his pee-pee dance. Yeah. Been there, too. <laughs> I've been there recently. I've got all girls. The fuck they're doing the bathroom that takes so long. I don't know. Everything. If had, yeah. If I had boys. I know what they were doing. I'd yell at them. <laughs> be like, keep doing that to yourself too many times. It'll fall off. They'd be like, what? Really? Or you grow hair uh, on the palm of your hands. Yeah, grow hair on the palm of your hands. Yeah. Then Cal budges past his mom to go in and slams the door and locks it. Then Sarah Polly is standing there doing a cute little girl pee pee dance. <laughs> um, she at least looks embarrassed about it. Yes. And then, like, she's uh, like, um, I know you're in a towel and like wet standing in the hallway, but, uh, but I, I really gotta go. Jenny's like, yeah. go. <laughs> She's given up now. She's just also, can we point out that the dad is still in the fucking house and he did not answer the goddamn phone? No, he's in the basement. He might not heard it. He heard it. If she can hear it <laughs> while the shower is running upstairs, he can fucking hear it from the basement while he's fucking painting ba- bike frames. Fuck that shit, man. Fun fact, uh, both Abby and Elizabeth Harnoise and Sarah Pauly went on to have like careers, good, big careers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cal, the brother played by a Robbie Magwood, who I thought showed great acting in this um, for a little kid. This was his one and only credit. Uh, 
I don't. He wasn't the greatest, but, but he, he did okay bad. with what he had. Um, Sarah Polly is sitting on the toilet watching the water overflow. And she's like, "Uh oh." Yeah. And Abby and Cal have to clean it up. Cal puts the mop handle right through the window. And but that's like, just I think, what mom needs. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna get your ass kicked. Um. Then what do we have? And then Abby's going to bed, and she's like, "Daddy, why is mommy such a bitch around Christmas?" And he's like, "Your mom used to be cool, but I don't know. Now she has a giant piece of coal stuck up her ass." Uh, but she's asking. So weird because I'm so happy <laughs> since I'm unemployed and I don't have to worry about paying the bills, and I just want to open up a bike shop with all of our savings, not thinking about the future at all and whether or not you kids are going to be able to eat in a month. But my that's wife, okay because I find Christmas. My wife bitched so much watching this movie. I'm like, I stop. And she's basically bitching about the same stuff. She saw. She saw. She's like, she's like yeah. why is everyone at Ginny? Why is it up to Ginny? Do that? Why is it up to? Th-? I'm like, yeah, Ginny's got to take Ginny, care but... of everything. Ginny has to Ginny. worry about everything because her husband is sitting there going, "I want to fix bikes. <laughs> I want to fix bikes. Be happy. Be happy. Fuck you." <laughs> the woman but, in me just so much anger. But Dad assures her that there is a Santa. Then we see Ginny with uh, the teacup set and the etch a sketch, and that yeah. is like their big gifts. <laughs> Dad. Yes. Jack is like, well, poor. let's take a few hundred dollars out and get the kids some cool toys. They got those new Transformer toys that they, they, these ones don't molest children anymore. <laughs> For those listening, uh, we where was that? Three men and a three wise three, men and a baby. Wise and a baby. We uh, during the live episode, we watched a Transformer where the all the kids' faces were blurred, and I thought it was yeah. because the Transformers molested them. But uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, yeah, Jenny's having none of it, none of that. No one is touching yeah. that 5,000. Fuck yeah, because they have to be moved out in 10 days, which means they need to find a new place, which means first and last rent and setting up utilities. Yeah, the fuck? What does he think he's going to do with it? A couple hundred dollars that's a lot of money in 1985. Yeah, because like, yeah, we went over the uh, the wish book. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could probably, but for a few hundred bucks, you could probably get some kick ass toys. Uh, but even still, like Jack comes up with that plan to open his bike shop because at the beginning, his buddy's like, the bike shop would cost 5000 Then Jack comes up with a small loan idea and they would only have to use like 2000 And Jenny's yeah. like, no, <laughs> don't say so. You know why? Because Jenny's already thinking, you still got to pay the loan. Yeah. You're not going to make any money in the first couple months. Why? How are you going to do this? How are you? We have nothing. Why would they give 19... you a loan? But it was it was 1985. I'd be like, now look here, woman. I don't know what decade you think you're in. Then I'd and, run. <laughs> and then she would turn around and be like, look here, asshole. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> Who's paying the fucking bills? What'd she say she Not made? You. Was it like four four and change an hour? Yeah. Yeah. That was like minimum wage at the time. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Because I realized this, this is terrible. When I first started working at the age of 16, because that was when, I don't know if they still have it, the two, um, the under 18 minimum wage and the over 18 minimum yeah. wage. They, yeah. I don't know if they have it now, but yeah. I, I don't know if that. they have it, but I remember when I got my first job, it was like a big deal. Cause he was like, my boss was like, we're going to pay you six eighty five an hour. That's, that's the over 18 minimum wage instead of paying you six forty five an hour. Yeah. And I was like, it's 40 cents an hour. Why do you think this is something to celebrate? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, but I buddy. worked there for many years. Anyways. Um, yeah. Four dollars. That was like grown people money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Abby is like, well, mom and dad are blowing Christmas. Uh, I better get my letter to Santa before this whole Christmas is a wash. She runs out to the mailbox and this creepy Gideon in his trench coat. He starts, he starts out with like, Hey, can you keep a secret? That was the first thing I was like, Oh God, this is going to take a terrible turn. But first of all, can we talk about what's in her letter? She's like, Santa, I just want you to answer this letter and tell me if you're real. Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's her entire fucking letter because her mother is such a Grinch. Yeah. With with very valid reasons. But she doesn't realize that. Yeah, she's she doesn't realize because seven. she's six, seven, whatever. She's a yeah. child. She doesn't yeah. see that. But her dad is also feeding her with, of course, Santa's real. Of course, you can get whatever you want. Of course. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. 
manage expectations. Um, but anyways, so and they also overheard their parents talking about the gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why are we getting these shitty gifts? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, why is mom buying me my tea set? Like, why is that the big? So anyways, so she does that. She runs out in the middle of the night in her slippers and her robe. Do children actually wear robes like on their own? Yeah, my my youngest wears robes. Really? Yeah. Cuz I as a child never wore a robe. I never wore a robe. Um I had a robe, but it was very rarely that I wore it. Wait, like you would put it on if your mom told you to. Yes. Yes. You like you weren't, "Oh, I'm going to leave my room to go to the bathroom. Let me no. put on my robe." No. Yeah. Children wear a lot of robes in the 80s. Yeah. Of their own volition, and I don't understand that. But anyways, they're cute on little kids. They are really fucking adorable, but especially when they have like the slippers that match, (laughs) so cute. Um, so she runs out into the street to go deposit her thing in the post box, and Gideon is standing there like a creeper. I'm like, run, Abby, run! (laughs) And uh, Gideon is like, I know your mom's a real Grinch, so we're gonna help her find her Christmas spirit. And Abby's like, how? And Gideon's like, well, I can't tell you how because you would cry. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. He's uh, like, it's going to get bad, but yeah. then it'll get better. Yeah. But he gets Abby's letter back in the horrible mid-80s special effects fashion and tells her, make your mom mail this. Mom notices Abby gone, looks out the window, sees Abby running across the road without looking as a car is coming down the road. This was like watching my kids in their daily lives, completely oblivious. The car slams on its brakes. And the horn, and just like Gideon did his the hockey puck, he sent that car right through the neighbor's living room. No, that would have been awesome. <laughs> it would have been something. The neighbor like, like really, movie. really. <laughs> no, it just flashes and it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Just goes past her, and then she's apparently back on the sidewalk, and then runs back across. Yeah, to her mom, and her mom's all like, "You fucking left the house in the middle of the night." <sighs> Yeah, to take, mail a letter to Santa. Yeah. Takes her back to the room. And I was like, are you going to beat me now? <laughs> Honestly, she was. Uh, I'm not even going to lie. If I had pulled uh, that shit. Like, I remember one time I tried to run oh, away from God. home. Um, and my mom caught me going up the street. Because I I, st- I just packed a suitcase, walked out. And then I was, I figured I would go to my friend's house. So I was just walking down the street and then my mom came out of the house and I saw her and I started to book it. And then my mom started to book it and she did actually catch me. (laughs) I was also like five years old and had really little legs. They're not that much bigger now, but I mean, really little. So she caught me real easy. And then she was like, where were you going to go? I'm like somewhere else. I was so dramatic. God. But anyways. And this movie, I don't know, it kind of seemed like my parents threatened to beat me all the time. Like, and we didn't have a lot of money, money, uh, not this bad, but it was it was not out of the the realm of believability. Like in the 80, 80s, complaining about the cost of groceries, parents arguing about money, kids being smacked around, it was normal. So oh. I, it, although this movie was depressing, maybe that's why I found it so depressing. It brought me back <laughs> to all those things. You're like, I'm having flashbacks to my childhood. Yeah. This is terrible. Oh, oh, this is horrible. We were not poor, but I will say we were definitely working class. Yeah. So yeah. we were, we would buy something that was expensive, but my parents had been saving up for months for it. Yeah. And they were like, we're going to buy made, something of quality. They let you know. Oh, Don't oh, fucking every touch day. this. I paid like 800 or 500 for it. If I catch you touching, I'm going to break Every your fucking day. Yeah. No, you knew. <laughs> You knew better than to fuck with shit in the house. Are you kidding me? There would be none of this. Oops, I broke it. Fuck that. They'd be like, go. Go find a job. Go do something because you're bringing home the money to pay for that. Not like today. where It was an accident. Yeah. My parents did not care. But anyways, it can be a little bit triggering, this movie. Because I see. Because there were lots of times where my parents would say, like, we don't have the money for that. Oh, yeah, all the time. Why do you think we're rich? Yeah. So we were very aware of, like, the cost of things and the value of things. And in this movie, in this marriage, one parent seems very aware. The other one's like, "Mm, it will be fine. It's Christmas. God, I wanted to punch him. (laughs) 
Two nights before Christmas Eve, Abby meets Gideon, Gideon well, oh, okay, while mailing the letter to Santa. Gideon asks her to have her mother mail instead and protects Abby from being hit by a speeding car. Abby gives the letter to her mother, but she refuses to mail it. So by this time, I'm like, what is with this woman? I get the, the husband's a dink, mm. but and I got into an argument with my wife. She's like, she's trying to make sure this is done and that's done. And I'm like, they got $5,000. Buy some presents. <laughs> Yeah, but that I mean, five thousand that five thousand dollars has to pay for their rent, their utilities, their food, their gas money, and their gas guzzling car. It also has to help them float themselves because the husband doesn't have a job. Yeah. So they probably have to take a little bit of money out every single month to supplement her very low wage income because him, he's he's fixing bikes in the basement for the neighborhood kids instead of that, delivering pizzas. And but my argument was like, how many people have five thousand in their bank account today? Not that many. No, but a lot be, of them are dual income homes. Yeah, but be like me. Just put on your credit cards and be like, that's a January problem. <laughs> <laughs> this, Honestly, same. <laughs> this past September, I cleared all the leaves out of my my pool because the pool company comes and they were coming to close it up. Mm -hmm. Lots of leaves still on the tree. It was a weird fall. Two days later, pool company shows up. The pool is full of leaves again. They're like, uh, you didn't pay for us to remove leaves. We could do it, but we're going to charge. And I'm like, no, that's a May problem. <laughs> and I just realized as we talk about the state of people not affording food or Christmas presents back in the 80s, me, a middle-aged white dude, talking about closing his <laughs> pool and having to deal with dead leaves and uh, opening back up in May. I don't know what to tell you, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> um, here, here, <sighs> here's the thing, though. Where do you live? Yeah, I'm. I'm a little up north. You're. You're. Yeah. You're not in like Toronto or Montreal no. or Vancouver, no, where it's definitely where not it's New York. Definitely not <laughs> New York LA. or LA, or or even Boston. Like you're not in Paris or Lisbon. Or London. No, it's a little more affordable. Your north. your housing costs are a little bit more affordable. Yeah. Which makes sense why you have a pool. Yeah. Then they go visit Grandpa, played by Arthur Hill. Another guy who was in a ton of stuff. Not and a star. He just, yeah, he's dead too. <laughs> the, the family visits uh, Jack's grandfather, Caleb, who gives Abby a snow globe of the North Pole. Gideon visits Abby again and warns her that some bad things are going to happen. No shit. But she should not be afraid. He accidentally mm. drops, drops and shatters her snow globe and then magically restores it. That was a nice rewind effect. Yes. Uh, Ginny and Jack discuss their finances and Ginny tells Jack he should find a new job instead of opening up a bike shop. Frustrated, he leaves the house to go for a walk. She goes after him. And they talk and then he's like, ah, you did a shitty job cheering me up. And he walks off. Then she meets Gideon. Mm. All the Christmas lights on the street around her turn off. And Gideon's like, uh, you're kind of a kind of a grincher on Christmas. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, I am. You want to make something of it, old man? <laughs> that never happened. But we're like, this is like the 35, 40 minute mark. And it's depressing. And it's only getting worse. It is uh, so terrible. And also at the same time, I, I'm there's an extra layer for me as a woman who has been conditioned to behave a certain way by society. I'm just raging at the husband. And I'm like, you threw a hissy fit because your wife was like, can you please just get a job <laughs> instead of opening up, taking all of our money or even part of our money that is our cushion, our safety net, because we have children we need to feed. Instead of opening up a bike shop that you can't guarantee is going to work, can you please just get a job with a salary that pay pays you every week? And he's like, you're no fun. Yeah. You're Why dead. can't you believe in my dreams? She's Sounds a fucking like cashier at a grocery store. Yeah, that was her dream. She got her dream. She did not get her dream. <laughs> Nobody's dream is to be a cashier at a grocery store. Are you fucking kidding me? Because I'm sure every cashier at every grocery store right now, if they're listening to this, they're like, I had 55 people today yell at me about the price of tomatoes. Oh, I don't make the price today, of tomatoes. Today, at least, but, uh, probably a lot more. Probably a lot more. And a lot like, of them are probably Every single person dicks. who walks through is like, why is this so expensive? I had that when I worked at coffee shops. Yeah, like I had that I where when I was... 
yeah, the price goes up and they start yelling at me. I'm like, do you think I control the prices? Yeah. I press I, buttons and I pour coffee. I sure got a gas station on long weekends. The owners would up the gas price. Yep. And the old people are like, what the fuck? Like, 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 I fucking do it, dude. I'm fucking 15. You want gas or not? I don't give a shit. I would always be like, I make minimum wage. Yeah. I pour coffee. I press buttons. You yeah. Are you mad about the price? Go over to Muffins. Yeah. Their coffee is way cheaper. Yeah. Make it Leave at home, alone. dipshit. <laughs> yeah. Get your shit together. Problem. Don't yell at me because I don't give a shit. Do you want to buy the coffee or not? I have a lineup of people who have money. If you don't, just leave. But anyways. I yeah. always, 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 100%, unless the person is going out of their way to make me angry, try to be as positive and understand, because I know those workers. That, yeah. They're just doing their job. That's it. They didn't put yeah. the prices on anything. The amount but I, I've seen people being just cunty, and it's unfair for the workers. Totally well, it's unfair. funny, because the, the last time I worked retail... I was working it as a second job on top of my full-time job because I was like, sure, why not? I'll get a discount on tea. I was working at David's Tea. And I gave zero fucks because I had a whole ass salary on top of like this yeah. was just for fun money and for a discount. So I was like, cool, whatever. So every time someone started getting a little cunty with my workers, with my my fellow colleagues, I'd be like, don't talk to her like that. Watch your tone. You know what? We're not serving you today. Get out. And they would be like, you want to lose a customer? Sure. You're yeah. not the only customer. Another one will walk in in another 10 minutes. Yep. I don't need you. So will you when you want your coffee bad enough or tea or whatever the fuck you're yeah. drinking. I'm like, I don't need you. You need me. So I, I, but I could do that because if I got fired for being an ass to the customers, whatever. That's I why I'm surprised it. Starbucks baristas are so nice. You, oh yeah, you're not gonna. People aren't gonna stop going to Starbucks. Starbucks is so big. Yeah, like Starbucks employees are just like, my job is safe. Let's keep going. Yes. Um, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, frustrated. He leaves. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, go. So yeah, yeah. she's talking to Gideon, uh -huh. and he's like, "You don't have Christmas spirit, Ginny." And she's like, "I don't. How the fuck do you know my name?" Then you just gone disappeared and she's like huh just shrugs it off like huh that was weird <laughs> where'd he go <laughs> creepy man in the street just talking yeah. to me knows my name okay i'm just gonna go to bed now yeah i'm like dude just vanished in front of you and you're like huh uh then we get the morning where jack and his buddy get a generator for the lighting of the tree mm -hmm. and his buddy's like i can't believe we're spending all of our money on this tree and jack's like dude shut the fuck up my have you met my wife <laughs> Yeah, spending their own money. Uh, yeah, yeah, because the city refuses to pay for even five cents worth of electricity to light up the tree. Yeah, but yeah, there. Yeah, he's like got me in my sleep and used my intestines to wrap around the tree. <laughs> Jenny friend picks her up, Michelle Meerink, who was in so many '80s movies, Real Genius, yeah. Revenge of the Nerds, The Outsiders. She's like, I only got eight bucks. Don't let me go over. Then we're back on Wikipedia on Christmas Eve on our way to work. Ginny meets Harry Dickens. That's the guy who was bitching about. She charged uh, two times on the Doritos. Yep. Who's trying to sell some of his uh, possessions in order to support himself and his son. But he's trying to sell his car for like a hundred bucks. Then yeah. 50 bucks. Then his hot plate. <laughs> he's like, something. Yeah. Yeah. Ginny's like, oh, sucks to be him. <laughs> he probably had 5k in the bank and took a couple hundred out here, a couple hundred out there. Now See? Look at him. See? <laughs> He's a walking lesson. <laughs> yeah. Jack leaves the children in the car while he goes to the bank to withdraw some of their savings for Christmas shopping. Abby leaves. I thought he was going to get the money. for. I, I didn't know that's what he was doing. I didn't know it was specifically for the presents. But I, I thought he was getting the money for the tree. Money. Yeah. I don't know if it was for the tree or for presents, but he was taking money out of their account yeah. on the sly. And he Abby... double parked. Yeah. And left his kids in the car. Yeah, yeah. It's the 80s. It's the Abby 80s. Leaves, Abby leaves the car to see Ginny at the grocery store across the street and tells her that her dad is at the bank. Ginny leaves to stop him. Yeah, thinking he's taking money out for the presents. And her boss yeah. fires her. She was willing to lose her job so her husband doesn't get their kids Christmas presents. <laughs> well, no, no, no. She was like, I'll be back. I'll be back. And I'm sure she thought, I'm just going to go over. 
going to be like, don't do that. And then run back over and beg for her job back. Because she was also scheduled to work a double. So, yeah. And with a Christmas rush, like he's he's really going to fire her for taking 10 minutes. Yeah. He needs her. So I think that's what she was hoping was going to happen. She's like, just wait. I'll be right back. It's just like a little minute. She returns Abby to the car and enters the bank, which Harry is robbing at gunpoint. Jack attempts to calm Harry down, but Harry impulsively shoots and kills Jack. He flees in Jack's car with Cal and Abby still inside. Jeannie takes Harry's car to chase after him. But that shitbox runs out of gas before or the engine yep. goes before she can even catch up to him. Good eye on the mechanic who wouldn't buy it for 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> he swears to avoid the police but skids off a bridge into the river believing she has lost her husband and children. Ginny returns to the house grief stricken. That's right, listeners. We are well past the 50 minute mark and I'm like, what the fuck was this <laughs> thinking? <laughs> Well, because here's the thing. She's in the bank when her husband gets shot. And then she's like, he's dead. He killed him. And like her husband's just lying there on the floor and she's kind of crying a little bit, but she's super yeah. calm about it. And then yeah, she didn't someone, like I think someone told her. Yes. that Like you just took off took... in your car with the kids. Yeah. And she's like, my kids, my kids. It's just standing outside the bank. My kids, my kids. He took my kids. He took my kids. And then she realized I can walk. So then she went to the car, his car, and like started driving, which was fine. But it's funny because she thinks, well, she sees her husband die. She sees the car go off into the water or sees the car in the water, whatever. Thinks her kids have drowned. Yeah. And everybody's dead. That's what she really believes. And I'm sitting here watching this movie going, is this supposed to give her the Christmas spirit? Yeah. Considering this is all happening on <laughs> Christmas Eve. I was like, is this is this where she says, my God, Christmas is wonderful. First, my dad dies last year around Christmas. <laughs> and now my husband and my kids die yeah. <laughs> around Christmas. Christmas is a miracle. Yeah. It's like, who wrote this? Can you imagine in 1985? Hey, family, let's get into the Christmas spirit and watch a holiday movie down at the old <laughs> multiplex. I hear a Disney Christmas movie is playing. <laughs> this would be terrible. Now, if you think this fucking depressing sack of a shit movie couldn't even get any more depressing, it doesn't. This is where the spirit of Christmas kicks in. <laughs> Thank God, because I have never contemplated suicide before this. Well... <laughs> Once during last holiday, and then again when you made me watch that Hallmark movie. Um, Shut up! Shut up! That was, <laughs> those were great. You love them. Shut up! <laughs> Gideon rescues the children, and the police bring them home. Ginny tells them that their father is dead and is never coming home. It's still depressing because she, like, even though the kids yeah. are saved by Gideon, because she's like, "Daddy was shot and killed today," and Abby's like, "Can we go visit him in the hospital?" <laughs> like, yeah, and no, sweetie, Christ. no, sweetie, he's never coming home. That's <sighs> it. He's gone. Abby goes to the town Christmas tree. That's where Gideon told him that when she really needs him, that's where he'll be. And ask him to bring back her father. He tells her he can't, and the only one who can is Santa Claus. Earlier, we learned that Gideon was once a cowboy and yes. died, I think, on Christmas or December trying to Around rescue a boy. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, it was Christmas time. Out of a river, and he rescued the kid, but he drowned, and because it was Christmas, he became a Christmas angel. So Gideon takes Abby to the North Pole to see Santa. Like the movie or not, that was a beautiful shot of Gideon walking towards Santa's. Yes. Uh, that was a, a wonderfully beautiful. I would buy that picture. There is some very pretty cinematography in this movie. Yeah. I will give it that. That's um, all I'm giving it. I, I really like the depiction of Santa and his workshop and his reindeer mm. in this movie. Truth be told, I like depictions of Santa in any movies usually. No, but I, um, I, I really like that it wasn't elves working in santa's workshop it was people who have died died and were good and and were good and wanted yeah. to keep helping and i was like so that nice. was nice i really like that little twist they really should have done this about 30 40 minutes earlier they should have yeah, really picked this <laughs> like give me a little peek like, into santa claus and like what we're aiming for because i'm like yeah i don't know where we're going with this movie until we we hit that point but even then I was like, I'm sorry, because Ginny realizes that Abby is gone. Mm -hmm. So now she's watched her husband die, has thought seemingly thought she watched her kids die. 
yep. got her kids back, and now one of her one kids is away. missing. Yeah. In the middle of the night. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, I'm still waiting for this woman's fucking Christmas spirit moment. Because I don't how, how the woman has been through it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Santa informs her that he also cannot fix what has happened or make her mother feel better. But perhaps Abby can. He shows her his workshop, which is a factory run by Christmas angels instead of elves. He retrieves a letter Jenny sent him as a child and tells Abby to give it to her mother. Gideon returns Abby to her house and she gives her mother the letter. Reading it makes Jenny realize that the spirit of Christmas is to be thankful for what she has. She goes outside to mail Abby's letter and says goodbye to Gideon. All the Christmas lights on the street come back on and it is the night before Christmas Eve again. Jack is alive. He just comes strolling around the, the block from when they were arguing the night before. When he had his hissy fit. Yeah. The next day, Jenny's boss gives her the day off so she can spend it with her family. Begrudgingly, he does. and She kisses yeah, his cheek. Because she demanded the yeah. day off. Yeah. At the gas station, she buys Harry's camp stove. He does not rob the bank. That evening, she attends the tree lighting in the village square and joins the participants in singing Oh Christmas Tree. Later, the family is celebrating Christmas at Caleb's, the grandpa, and she writes a check to Jack for the bike shop as a Christmas present. Ginny hears Santa downstairs and finds him putting presents under the tree. He tells her Merry Christmas, Ginny, and she says in return, and that is our movie. That's also because I want to point out through the entire movie, the running theme was people will tell her Merry Christmas, but she never says it back. Yeah. So it's supposed to be like this big moment when she says it back. Yeah. It was not this big moment. Because I was yeah. just glad it was over. I was like, that was it. That was, <laughs> that was, she read a letter that she wrote to Santa. And she's all like, oh my God, Christmas is magical after all. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> so what's your score? <laughs> That's some bullshit. That's some bullshit right there. Skip this motherfucking movie. Skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it. Never watch it ever. <laughs> if for nothing else like other than the fact that it's super depressing oh it is depressing because literally it just spends probably 80% of the movie just showing you how shitty this woman's life is yeah. and how much more difficult the people in her life are making it because they're not helping her they just keep saying but it's Christmas yeah. but it's Christmas lighten and up not, Grinch <laughs> yeah and they're not actually helping her make her life easier they're making it harder and then all of a sudden, she reads one letter, mails one letter, and then she's like, oh my god, Christmas is amazing. No, fucker. No. This movie could have done so many other ways where there wasn't some poor suffering wife who had to live through this bullshit. They could have, there were many other ways to give her the Christmas spirit. This, this movie is an exercise in just anger and, and trying to control yourself. No, skip it. Skip this motherfucking movie. I think Roger Ebert was right. It had great actors. It had great yes. acting. had a great script. It had great directing. It was beautifully shot. Well, I mean, I, it was shot. To, they made it. They they really wanted it to look depressing. And boy, did they deliver. The Santa Claus stuff was fantastic. I love that, everything in the North Pole. Yeah, that was. And yeah, so my score. This movie is depressing. And it is a time capsule of how hard it was on people. I think a lot of people can twist, attest to that now. The homelessness, the food prices. I think this movie is more relevant now than it would it was the decades that followed since 1985. The acting was great. The nostalgia was great. I would have made it a little more... A little bit more to justify Ginny's attitude. Like, give her a bit more meaning to her character. But, like, I know they need that 5000 at the end to give it to Jack for the bike shop. It could have had some more happier, happier moments. Like instead of Jenny just like, for God's sakes, uh, you're almost eight. There's enough of the Santa shit. She could have been like, sometimes Santa only has a bit of toys to give to kids. And yeah, they really made her out to be the bad guy in this movie. When you're watching it, you can really see why <laughs> she is the way she is. Yeah, um, but they could have get they could have made her. A bit more because I didn't really like her character. I thought she was a Grinch. I understood it. I think there were issues between because, like, Gideon, like, Harry Dean Stanton is a great actor. We yes. know this, like, objectionably. He's just a really great actor. Yeah. But maybe it's between the script and the direction. He just ended up coming off super creepy. 
through this entire thing. And I'm like, you're not giving me warm, fuzzy Christmas angel. You're giving me like, like molester, luster the molester. <laughs> like that's what you're giving me. And it's, it's weird. And then Ginny, yes, she's having a hard time. Yes, she's defeated by life. But it gave me listless and like almost aloof. Like she had already just given up. Yeah. And she just kind of, because even when she's trying to get her husband to do stuff for her, for the family, she's just like, can you? (sighs) And then that's it. And you're like, girl, give me something. And then she tries to seduce, give us a kiss. And I'm like, this is so out of place. Like, I don't, what? It was very, you know? Anyways, just thought I'd share that with you because I was like, this is, this feels weird and off. It did have a message and it was very upbeat. Well, mostly for the last, what, 15, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Right about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It could have been worse. It could have ended with Ginny just sitting on the bed and a voiceover going. It was then that Jenny realized that Christmas spirit was being thankful for what she had. If only she realized it before her <laughs> husband was shot to death and her children drowned. And then it just faded to black. <laughs> but at least it would have set up a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> This is not a Christmas must watch. I might watch it again. Like if I'm filled with too much Christmas joy and spirit and need to be brought down a jolly peg or two. (laughs) I say uh, stream it. And I say that if you remember it, if you have not seen the longest time, I would say stream it. And if you want to see 1980s, just really depressing Christmas movie, uh, stream it. I, I wouldn't say skip it. I wouldn't rent it. I wouldn't pay money to be this depressed watching a movie. I wouldn't buy it. (laughs) It's not the movie I remember, but maybe because in the 80s, my parents were threatening me and (laughs) they were fighting with money. It just seemed normal to me. I don't know. But yeah, I say stream it just out of curiosity. I think you have to be in a very good mental state if you're going to stream it. Like if the holidays (laughs) are already hard for you, Oh yeah, don't watch don't, it. Don't watch this movie. If don't you're like, hi, if you're in desperate financial, don't watch this to, movie. Yeah, if you're about to like bankruptcies right around the corner. Yeah, don't, don't, don't watch this. Don't. This isn't going to cheer you up. If if you're in a marriage where your partner doesn't do anything to support you <laughs> or any of your dependents, don't watch this movie. Because you'll become homicidal, and then you'll be saying on Christmas morning, "Gee, Your Honor." I don't know why I sh- I shivved my husband 15 times in the gut. <laughs> oh, wait, I remember because he said, but it's Christmas. I just took a little bit of money out of the bank. So what if we can't pay for our electricity? But they did have everything here. They did. They had the actors. They had a script. They had and uh, Roger Ebert was actually right. The delivery just didn't work. It the didn't. delivery didn't work. And I think with small changes to the script. Like Gideon dealing directly with Jenny. Yes. As opposed to like dealing with the kids. Involve the kids 100%. But if he did more talking to Jenny, if he did more like here, highlight moments of Christmas spirit throughout her super depressing time it, instead of just the last 15 minutes with this one or two yeah. miracles. Like, you know, it was just, it felt really, we're going to keep pushing you down, 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 down. And I think that's what the director thought. I push you right down to the bottom and then I'm going to lift you right up. And yeah, but then by that time a, it's too late. By that time it's too late. You're just like, yeah. well, at least everybody's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that was literally, that's the Christmas spirit moment. Well, at least everybody's not dead. I'm not thrilled her husband's back. And then she just signs a check for him. And I was like, girl, I feel like you missed the point of this. He missed the point of this because he just yeah. died. And came back, so everything's fine for him. But she's like, no, I'm going to spend time with my family. I'm like, that's cute. Who's going to pay the bills in January? Yeah, Not your husband. She'll be working some doubles at that grocery store. She has to, because he's not even working singles anywhere else. I but mean, I will like, say, I will say that when Gideon is walking Abby to the North Pole, and then when they get inside, that is beautiful. That whole depiction of yes. Santa... The people, it's too bad they didn't, they really could have had a special movie here and they, the delivery was just fucked up. Even if they had opened up the movie with Gideon being in the North Pole, 
yeah. Santa giving him his assignment there instead of that weird voiceover thing. Like that would have been such a great kind of kick up to the movie. Yeah. And then you start on a high note. And then as you're going down, you're like, oh, but then when you get back to the North Pole with Abby and Gideon, and then you get them, the Ginny's husband to come back to life, you're kind of buoyed a little bit because you have that. But it just starts on a low note and keeps going down, 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 yeah. down till you're subterranean. Like, And, and then they're like, poor... we're just going to bring you back to the ground floor. Yeah. And you're like, Bleh. and this is poor, can't afford this. And then husband gets shot and the kids drown in the river and <laughs> yeah and, and, <laughs> and then, maybe they should have got gideon to appear to abby that something bad was about to happen and he saves her have some fucking wings instead of being like hey can you keep a secret <laughs> yeah, well, lesser the molester yeah chester um, oh, lester. chester the molester all the molesters uh, it's chester the molesting angel <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, that's my issue with this movie because I'm like, yeah. I can see with small tweaks. Oh, it could have been a fantastic been a movie. Completely different movie. But I yeah. like, obviously, it was a choice. This was the choice they made. Yep. And I'm sad for everybody who made this choice because yeah. I'm like, why would you want to put that? Because when you take people down so low emotionally, even when you have something miraculous happen, you're not pulling them up to that height of of happiness you're just pulling you're regulating them so they're not super depressed anymore now they're just mildly depressed yeah and then you the movie ends and you're like that's it although i want to give a quick shout out to uh meford ontario and also owen sound ontario that's where it was that's where they shot right? this yeah yeah yeah, yeah you um, live in shitholes <laughs> No, they live in very cute small communities. Well, in 1985, down. you lived in. In 1985, they were smaller communities. But it was winter and it was bleak and wow, yeah. the day. Honestly, there was one shot where she's on the street. I think it's when Abby's like running across the street and almost gets hit by a car. There's so much slush in the streets. I was like, ah, yeah. oh, winter. Yeah, awesome. It's coming. Winter. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. just kind of here now. Well, it's it, not it's, that bad here. It snowed up here and. Actually, the snow's sticking, but it's supposed to be plus four on Saturday. And I'm like, oh, for fuck the slush and the. I'd rather just snow. Just give me the snow. I don't want slush. I would rather have snow and cold. Yes. Than, than slush slushy... and warmth. Yeah. Like pick. Because none of this bullshit. I don't like the slush. It gets dirty and skanky and I don't like it. Yeah. No, snow and cold. I can put. Yeah. I have a fireplace above my, my TV, above my fireplace. I can. I have blankets. It's awesome. Yeah. I have, for, yeah. I have thick sweaters. Like I'm fine with that. Socks. I'm for good. Months. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I'm okay. As long as I don't have to go outside. That's so what I mean. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I can stay inside during the, and go out occasionally, I have a really good, very warm, very long winter coat. So I'm like, I can deal, but it's the slush and the splashing of stuff. Cause inevitably at least twice during every winter, some fucking car goes through a puddle oh, and yeah. ice cold slushy crap looks onto me and I'm like the worst is when you're not paying attention and you step in it you're like fuck and it and it goes <laughs> past your ankle and yeah. you're like how how are you that deep yeah yeah fuck winter and fuck this movie uh, <laughs> uh, yeah well we got to skip it from Anna we got to stream it my my stream it has an asterisk just to to clue you in if you remember liking it or you're morbidly want to check it out but yeah do not rent it do not buy it no i now have to watch them up at christmas carol to like bleach my mind of this movie yeah i had to watch i had to go and watch some king of queens just to yeah just to get me back on the <laughs> off the suicide train yeah like oh my god all right. Well, thanks for joining us for our last of our Christmas movies. And yeah. Yep. Well, until the next movie we remember liking. Yay. Woo. Congratulations. You just had one of your childhood movie memories vindicated. Or they just eviscerated it. I don't know. 
This is a generic one size fits all type of ending to the podcast. So thank you for listening and please join Anna and Jimmy next time for another episode of the I Remember Liking That Movie podcast. If you dare to go back and watch that movie you remember liking, 